weeks ago, I was getting ready for work and I had the TV on in the morning. On that specific day, there was a round table on a TV show discussing racism. One of the guests was Dr. Shola Moschok Bamin, a black woman who happens to be a lawyer, book author, and a political activist. As the conversation went on, Dr. Shola could never finish a sentence while she was trying to exp express her experiences and concerns. Why? The host of the TV show kept interrupting her. At some point, Tired of the situation, Dr. Shola looked at him and said these words, listen and you might learn something. Sadly, this is not just a TV show. This is a reflection of the society we live in. People who want to express their concerns and experiences around, especially around racism, homophobia, sexual harassment, and mental and health well-being, they just cannot get their thoughts across because people are not properly listening to them. So, what I want to share with you today is how I had an idea for an inclusive mentoring program and by sharing the learnings from it, I will invite you to learn a little bit more how listening can be the first step to create a more inclusive world. And the good thing about this idea is that you can start today. Some of you may be thinking, do we really need to change things around or in my groups, uh, my teams, diversity is not a problem, inclusion is not an issue. Well, let's listen to the data. A study from Stonewall says that 35% of LGBTQ plus have hidden or disguised their sexual orientation at work because they were afraid of prejudice and bias. One out of five said that they already have been the target of negative comments or misconduct coming from work colleagues. And 20% of them said they were afraid to disclose their sexual orientation or gender identity on an interview because they were afraid they might not get the job. I know that sometimes this could be still too far from home. You might be thinking that I do not know anyone who went through that. So let me put a face on these statistics. I see bias and prejudice happening at workplaces all the time. While some of my colleagues' main concerns and worries are how to prepare better numbers for a meeting or how, what's going to be their next step of career, I see myself having much more basic concerns. Can I be myself in this workplace? Can I share, by my, share my sexual orientation with my work colleagues without putting myself out for prejudice and bias and be in the face of the jokes? Can, I, can people listen to me? and understand that I have different needs and concerns. So yes, being who you are is still deprives you from opportunities and we all have a role to play to change that. The way I tried to change some of these issues was create, through creating an inclusive mentoring program. The idea came alive with the partnership of Mais Diversidade, one of the largest diversity and inclusion consultancy in Brazil. Our purpose was to connect business leaders with LGBTQ plus talents in conversations where they could talk about professional and personal development. We shared with the mentors a full handbook of activities they could do, videos they could watch, and, and readings they could have to better be prepared for these conversations. But there is one single tool that I believe to be the most effective one and the most simplistic one as well. Listening. Active listen to the person you're talking to. Listen to them and to the story they're telling you without thinking on, on what you're going to say, what you're going to ask, or even without thinking what you would have done if you were in their situations. Listen to them, their stories with the intent to understand what they're coming from, what the problem they is, and what they were facing. Listen with the intent to connect with them. Listen to them and to their stories, and that will help you to become more inclusive. How? Well, first of all, if you're listening to someone else's story, properly listening to them, you can truly exercise empathy. You can understand what feels to be in their shoes, what their experiences look like, and how they feel and what's their vision of the world. You can understand how hard, for example, is to share about your sexual orientation or to openly discuss about racism 
or you can understand why a joke is so hurtful and not funny at all. Another thing you can learn by listening is how to break your bias. When you talk to someone you understand and you pay attention their, to their stories, you're going to start putting a face to the statistics I shared before, for example. And you're going to understand how you may be the one or one of the people creating those barriers for other people. I know that some of our bias might be unconscious, but as we talk to others, we can start to understand even our, how our unconscious bias are playing a role and how to, to create these barriers and how we can start breaking them down. Another thing you can learn by listening is how to build trust and how important it is to have trust to have deep and meaningful conversations. One of the simplest ways to get to the root causes of someone else's problems is making sure that they fully share with you what's going on. And as you properly listen to them and you show that you're interested in their stories, they're going to bond with you and share what it feels like to be on their shoes. So you build trust with them. As you go through exercising your empathy, uh, starting to understand your bias and building trust with the people you're talking to, you might be thinking, what can I do with this information that I've learned? First thing to, we have to do is to become a better ally, become a proper change agent. We can start taking these learnings that we're having from these conversations and start acting upon it. One simple example is we can start uh, when someone says a negative comment or a joke, you, we can start interfering and telling them that this is not funny and explaining to them what it feels to be on the other side of the joke. We can also start acting on bigger scopes, such as looking at the policies that we have around, even if it's workplace, on par private spheres or on the public spheres, and how we can help to change those policies so they become more inclusive. Another thing we can do as we listen to people and we learn from them is to break the mini-me effects around us. The mini-me effect is, according to a Forbes publication, a syndrome where people try tend to surround themselves with others that are very similar to them. Usually can start with the same degree, college background, uh, same hobbies, and most of the times ends with surrounding people that have the same gender, same sexual orientation, and race and ethnicity, ethnicity as you. So as you start breaking those mini me effects, you can start giving people opportunities that they wouldn't have before. And you're going to start seeing another important element, which is the value of diversity. As you start surrounding yourself with people who have different ideas and backgrounds than yourself, you're going to see different points of views of the world. You're going to, by you're going to learn simplistic things such as maybe new playlists, new movies, new authors, but you're also going to understand how much more creative we can be. For example, if we're trying to find a solution to a problem, because everyone will tip in with different perspectives. As we listen to these learnings and what we can learn by listening, you might be wondering, what have I learned as I went to the inclusive mentoring program? So I can honestly share with you that I thought I already knew a lot about diversity, inclusion, and bias. But as I was paired with a young gay black man, I learned a whole new story. And that story taught me uh, what it means to be gay and black and its intersectionality in a whole other level. So here are some of the learnings I had from this conversation. Right at the beginning of our uh, connections, uh, my mentee shared with me that he always had to fight harder on his workplace. He always had to work two, three times harder to prove himself. And one of the examples was when they were setting an employee resource group uh, about racism to discuss racism. And him, a black man, was cut off this conversation. He wanted to actively participate, in, but people kind of just disinvited him or not invited him at all. So this taught me that we need to properly look around to people when we're trying to discuss something. And if they're showing interest, we have to invite them. And if they're not showing interest, we have to make sure that we create the right environment so they can feel part and they can say, yes, I want to participate. Another thing that he shared with me is that uh, he never liked the way he looked. 
he he never liked his hair. He never liked his nose. So he therefore he always wore he has he had his hair very short. And there was a time in his life that he even wore clippers on his nose to make it thinner. Why? He wanted to look like the models we see on TV, the people we see in Hollywood. So that taught me an important lesson on how representation matters. And that myself, as a communicator, I have a role to play on breaking these beauty stereotypes and creating a world where people can see themselves reflected in any kind of media. Another thing that uh, he taught me is that because he went through so much racism and homophobia in his life, he never learned to love himself. He never learned to be proud of his story. He is such a young, talented and great professional, but he never could see that himself. So he taught me that we need to listen to people, listen to their stories and help them see their potential, even when they can't. And that's why I go back to the beginning of the conversation and to the talk show. We all need to listen. We all need to learn. And I really emphasize all because we can all be in a mentoring position. You can be a mentor at workplace as, uh, as you, are, you have a position of team leader or a manager. You can be a mentor as you're explaining to someone what can be their career choices or career options. You can be a mentor while discussing with your kids about racism or Asian hate. You can be a mentor as you're teaching your grandparents what it means to be transgender. Being a mentor means being in a position that you can talk to someone, inspire, motivate and guide, or just simply listen to them and support in a moment where they need. So again, listening can teach us important lessons on, lessons on how we can em exercise empathy, break our bias, and build trust with people. It can show us how to be better allies, proper change agents, how we can break the meaning effects around us and start valuing diversity. And through this acquired knowledge, we can all change the world. And I know, when I say change the world, it might sound so monumental, so utopic. But if we listen to someone else's story and we help that person to change their world, we are already creating true, meaningful inclusion. So what I will ask you today is, can you listen to someone else's story and help them to start changing their world? Can you do that today? Thank you.